hello hello friends thank you for watching at least I am at the finish of my historical review it's very interesting that I started from Paleolithic age and I came till 20th century <laughs> Uh, the history of uh, 20th century in Ukraine is very complicated and in my review I try to skip uh, the period of tragedy, the peri period of difficulties and show you how people built Ukrainian state. But uh, today we have really complicated and difficult topics about Ukrainian history. This is Ukraine between two totalitarian regime, between Soviet state and Nazi. <laughs> How Ukraine survived in that time? Um, first of all, I'd like to remind you that the last time I did video about Ukrainian state, it's um, it was uh, in uh, 1917 1919 when Russian Empire was break um, and Ukrainian intelligentsia tried to build Ukrainian state at the same time in the Western Ukraine was a similar process uh, because uh, Western Ukrainian intelligentsia politician tried to build Western Ukrainian state. Uh, as far as I remember, in 1918, uh, in January 22, uh, these two republic um, announced uh, uh, unition. They united in the one Ukraine. So it was uh, the big, big event because uh, for a long time part of Ukraine was under the Russian Empire and part under the Austro-Hungarian. But this republic uh, 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 no existed just for a short time because in uh, 1921-1922 uh, Bishwi came here and proclaimed Ukrainian Social Republic. <laughs> but nevertheless uh, politicians, intelligentsia, Ukrainians, they tried to fight for Ukrainian independence. Many of them went away to Western Europe, they stayed there, many of them came to the Western Ukraine because uh, the situation in Western Ukraine was much more better. Western Ukraine had no Bolshevik. Uh, that part of Ukraine uh, depend on Austria and also uh, of uh, Poland at that time. I would like to show you one of the... We consider him as a hero of Ukrainian history. This is well-known Stepan Bandera. Uh, probably you hear that uh, Vladimir Putin, Russian president, called Ukrainian Banderovci. Banderovci. This is because of him. Uh, who this man was? Mm. Till now there are different interpretations. Because for many Ukrainians, he like symbol of their freedom, symbol of nationalism, but many historians consider him um, as some provocator of Ukrainian history. Um, okay, let's start. Uh, Stepan Bandera was born in the family of Ukrainian priest in the western Ukraine. Uh, his father was Ukrainian patriots. He was a Greek Catholic. 
Greek Catholic, this is a um, separate torch that appeared uh, as a result of Unitian part of Orthodox and part of Catholic, um, Catholic community. So they created um, Greek Catholic Church uh, in, uh, in 1599. Uh, from his, his youth, uh, Stepan Bandera, from his student life especially, Stepan Bandera became a nationalist. Probably his um, thoughts uh, were in some way fascist uh, because um, uh, you know that it was such kind of the time when many young people were inspired by fascists, by Mussolini in Italy and also by Germany. So they followed their ideas about the big nation and Stepan Bandera consider uh, Ukrainians as a big nation and that Ukrainians should have their separate Ukrainian state and uh, only Ukrainian should live in the state or something like this. I don't sure exactly. Um, so Stepan Bandera with many other uh, young people um, he was a member of the big group of um, big Ukrainian party. Uh, it's called uh, Organizacja Ukrainskich Nacjonalistów, the organization of the Ukrainian nationalist. Uh, actually, this uh, organization was patriotical, but uh, in uh, the big way it was very radical, because uh, this organization did also terroristic attack. Uh, for example, um, I'm not sure about the year. Yeah, in 19, um, okay, in 1930s, uh, the friend of Bandera killed uh, Borislav per Perutsky, Peratsky. This is uh, the minister of the Poland, Polish minister. This man, he was not against Ukrainian. Uh, he um, told that uh, Pol Poland should respect uh, Ukrainians, uh, Germans, uh, Jewish people who live in the territory of Poland. And till now we don't know why they decided to kill him. <laughs> uh, about 60% of people who were killed by uh, this organization uh, created by Banderas were Ukrainians. For example, the director of the Ukrainian gymnasium in Lviv. Um, okay. In 19... Um, Bandera was in the um, strong connection with uh, special service of the German, of the Germany, the Nazi, yes. Uh, and in 1942 he was sent to Sachsen Gauss concentration camp, but he lived not on the territory of this camping, concentration camping, where people were killed, but he lived outside. He had connection with his relatives, he can uh, send them letter, and in one of the letter he asked them to send him candy. <laughs> so he had not a bad life. After 1942, uh, during the, um, during the all the period of, uh, of the war, till 1945, uh, he lived uh, in Berlin, he lived there in the good house and uh, he was free. He visited uh, different uh, uh, beach, <laughs> beaches, kurort, recru re recreation center, different places, uh, see, he can communicate uh, 
and uh, Germans, German um, um, government allowed him to do this. <laughs> yes. Um, but how this man became Ukrainian hero? For a long time, uh, Bandera, together with his family, tr um, should to move from one city to another because uh, Soviet uh, special service, police service, KGB, they were looking for him. And in uh, 19... I mean, it's in 1959 uh, in Munich uh, he was killed uh, at least by the one of the member of the KGB. Mm. Uh, when Ukrainian when Ukrainian uh, um, got independence, um, uh, Ukrainians Ukrainian started to remember about Bandera. And especially Canadian diaspora, especially diaspora, different radio, they talk about Bandera, that's his hero, he was killed by the Soviets, and so on. So just this fact that he was killed in that time make his hero. But actually, um, according to what he did, uh, it's difficult to call him hero. Um, so, I don't know. I would like to show you another Ukrainian. Ukrainian. Ah, by the way, this is uh, emblem of Ukrainian nationalist. Ukrainian nationalist. You can see trident and sword here and cross. Uh, this is the, um, the leader, the general of Ukrainian army, uh, Roman Shukhevich. Uh, he was uh, the great military. I think he really um, was a respectable man and uh, he did everything for Ukrainian independence. Uh, in the time of the war between Soviet and Nazi, all the time he was here in Ukraine. Till the 1950, till the year when he was uh, assassinated by the uh, Soviet, uh, uh, he lived in underground in the catacomb in forest in the western Ukraine. Uh, during the 1942-1943, he organized a partisan movement in Western Ukraine. For example, Soviet um, Soviet historian told that uh, uh, the great partisan of Ukraine was Kolpak. Kolpak. This is a Soviet partisan who organized a movement, but uh, this is true that this man organized an even bigger movement against uh, Soviets and Nazi in that time. Uh, this man, together with his uh, with other people, partisan, um, fight uh, um, and weak Soviet state, and they fight against Nazi. Uh, they had a hope that two regime kill each other and in such way Ukrainians Ukrainian state appeared. But it didn't happen. Uh, in 1944 Ukrainian Western Ukrainian Ukraine was occupied by the Soviet army and these people uh, appeared themselves inside of the Soviet Soviet state. For a long time, they live uh, secretly in forest. Till 1950, you can imagine, he lived here. He fought against uh, Soviets, but at least he understand that he cannot do something about against the regime. And in 1950, uh, Soviet authority did special operation against uh, Roman Shukhevich. 1,000 militaries took part in 
in this act, <laughs> act of finding and killing the general. He, together with his friend, they were just two, they, till the end of their life, they fought against Soviet. Uh, they were surrounded uh, by the Soviet, but uh, till the last moment, till the last second, he fought when he had gone in his, in his hand. Mm. So the question is why we uh, know why the world know this this Stepan Bera who live in the Western Ukraine uh, not bad life <laughs> as we see and this man Roman Chukhevich who was here for all his life and fight for Ukrainian Ukraine and organize uh, all Ukrainian around around him uh, as, as I understand that um, somebody would like to present us history from their point of view <laughs> in order to control people who live here. I would like also introduce you, uh, to you one more person, uh, one more Ukrainian. This is Andrei Sheptitsky. He is. He was the patriarch, the metro, I think, metropolite of Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. In my opinion, and in opinion of uh, many people who live, especially in Western Ukraine, he was the most influenced influenced person in that severe time in the period between the two war in the first part of the 20th century. Andrei Sheptitsky, he was born in the family of a uh, good family of a uh, uh, Western Ukrainian family, Sheptitsky. It was a very famous family. Uh, his mother was Polish, Polish woman, but his father came from the famous Russian, from the famous um, Ukrainian family Sheptetsky, but this family was pol polonized, polon um, was influenced by Poland. They um, got Catholic uh, religion. They got uh, they speak uh, Polish language uh, because in that time it was popular. It was prestigious uh, if you are Catholic, not Greek Catholic. But uh, Andrei Sheptetsky, he was the difference. Uh, he was very educative and he know his history and from his youth he understand that he need to do something for this land for ukraine uh, so he became a monk of the greek catholic church his mother was against uh, his mother didn't stand his uh, decision because she was Polish, he, she didn't understand how can be how can change Catholic Church stable Catholic to some <laughs> almost unknown Greek Catholic Church. Poor, I think. Um, but uh, uh, the main uh, idea of the uh, Andrei Sheptetsky, his wish, his dream was to found Ukrainian university here because we had no Ukrainian university in Western Ukraine. He in 1905 in, uh, he came to Austria and asked uh, parliament and government of the Austria to allow Ukrainians to have their own university. But it was really difficult because Polish was against uh, Ukrainians had their university and Austrian as well. At least uh, he asked uh, Papa the Roma, Greek Catholic Church uh, belonged to the also uh, the head of the Greek Catholic Church is Papa the Roma. Papa the Roma allow um, Sheptitsky make uh, university, create university. Uh, it was both law. Um, religional university, but Andrei Sheptitsky make everything for create their uh, 
uh, not religious, uh, not only um, place for study religion, not only place for priests. There were uh, students studied their history and even archaeology, uh, justic and different different subjects. Uh, this university exists till now. It's called Catholic University. You can see it's very modern, and besides, you can see church, the ancient church. And some of my friends uh, studied there in this university, and uh, I think that the influence of this, ma this man is much more bigger than to other. And uh, here you can see university inside. In that time, uh, um, the big um, uh, Greek Catholic Church had the, the big influence to Ukrainians who live in villages. And uh, Andrei Shepitsky made everything for creating their schools, Ukrainian school in villages. He created theaters. He, uh, he even uh, he he was a rich man, and he um, founded even Ukrainian bank ban banking system. Uh, so between two war, he's um, um, he was respectable by many many people who were religious in that time. Andrei Sheptitsky, he all the time live in Lviv. The, the government uh, in Ukraine changed all the time. Sometimes Nazi came, one time Nazi came to Lviv, uh, one time Soviet. In 1939, uh, Soviet militaries came into the city. In 1941, Nazi. Uh, but uh, Andrei Shpitsky told that uh, you should not follow uh, fall of dictatorship. You should to listen to the your moral moral uh, moral feelings. You should to listen to the God. At the same time, he tried to be friendly to the book regime because he know that uh, all the church, all the people who live there in Western Ukraine, they depend of him. Uh, he tried to talk uh, with Soviet, he tried to talk with Nazi. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, um, Greek Catholic Church was uh, destroyed by the Soviet and about one million and a half people were sent to Siberia, people from the Western Ukraine. It was the big tragedy for these people. And at least I follow the last question. Why Western Ukraine and uh, Eastern Ukraine is so different? Mm. You know, seven years ago in Ukraine we have Euromaidan and many people from Western Ukraine came there. They came there for um, uh, they they organize the actually they were the biggest who organize Maidan. They change each other. They stay there for many months. I know some people from there, and they um, were optimist. They uh, truly believe that they ch can change something. They can change dictatorship of uh, Yanukovych. Um, and I think that uh, they had this feeling because uh, they remember that their father, grandfather, grandfather fought uh, for Ukrainian state in the time of Second World War, and they did the same. At the same time, Eastern Ukraine was more slowly, uh, Central Ukraine was more slowly, Eastern were for Yanukovych, <laughs> supported Yanukovych. Uh, and many people here are told that nothing to change, uh, that Maidan is, uh, it's, 
it will be destroyed by Yanukovych. And I think uh, why it's happened, why Ukrainians are so different and have different opinion, because here in central Ukraine we had dictatorship of the Soviet for 70 years. Uh, Stalin, Russian leader, created Golodomor, the big famine, where many people were died, and uh, the best uh, mines of Ukrainians were sent to Siberia. Um, and other people who stay here, they were told that uh, people who had different opinion from the opinion of the Soviet state are something like mad crazy yeah you should follow our our politics and actually till now this uh, kind of thinking is it um, uh, is now in ukraine and uh, it's ruled by uh, many uh, many ukrainians many ukrainian politicians <laughs> yeah uh, so I wish you to follow your own principles. I wish you to be free and uh, think critically about all the politicians, all the mm, uh, all different politicians movement in order to be liberal to be free <laughs> oh, for all this uh, all this uh, stuff and uh, don't be disapp disappointed by by some heroes or some leadership uh, as it was in ukraine so thank you for watching me uh, i hope to see you next next week and uh, we continue our <laughs> historical book club, historical club <laughs> uh, video about uh, Ukrainian history. So, see you.